So we're gonna we're gonna do now a uh, continuous interscaling catheter here, and in here we can see the subclavian artery. Again, very nice image of the brachial plexus. Over here we can see the sheath around it. Superior, middle, and inferior trunks are all here. In here we can see the first rib because there's no shadow underneath. There's no structures, which gives us a clue that this is the uh, rib. Whereas in here we see the pleura. Uh, because we can see the appearance of the lung structures underneath. So that's the image. We could also decrease uh, the depth a bit more to get a bit more granularity. Now we're going to advance the probe proximally. As we advance in the probe proximally, what we see is the middle scaling muscle, anterior scaling muscle, and in here we can see the elements of the brachial plexus sandwiched between the middle and anterior scaling muscles. In here is likely the uh, phrenic nerve, which moves underneath the fascia of the anterior scaling muscle uh, right there. Okay, so, so this is the dorsoscapular nerve right in here, in the body of the middle scaling muscle. And again, one other reason why we routinely use nerve stimulation, <coughs> because if a needle encounters a dorsal scapular nerve, there could be elicitation of the unexpected distal motor response of the shoulder, which allows one to stop further advancing of the needle and avoid the damage to the nerve. <coughs> so we have the image which we were looking for. Middle scaling muscle, anterior scaling muscle. This is the interscaling brachial plexus space and that's the phrenic nerve uh, underneath the anterior scaling muscle. Okay, the procedure starts with injecting local anesthetic for the skin as we are going to use a continuous needle or a large gauge needle, which is 18 gauge needle, usually two style needle for this particular procedure is what we use. We usually use this opportunity also to visualize the needle as well because visualizing the needle gives you an, an indication also, what angle you will need to introduce your needle for the catheter. Um, so we use this as a seeker needle, if you will, or just gives, a, gives us a rough estimation of the angle that we will require to reach the brachial plexus. Okay, so now we insert in the needle. The needle is preloaded with the catheter, as it could be seen. So that makes advancement of the catheter simpler. Now the needle has been advanced in the subcutaneous tissue and enters now the middle scaling muscle. You can see the perceptible loss of resistance as the needle passes underneath the fascia of the middle scaling muscle. And now we're looking at the needle tip, which is now very close to the brachial plexus space. So we're going to try to insert the needle tip between the C5 and the C6 while avoiding the motor response. Visualization of the needle here creates a shadow, which is normal. Okay, at this point in time, we're going to... Okay, nerve stimulator is set, set up at 0.5 milliamps. We have no motor response. Aspiration here is negative, and an ejection should result, if successful, in a displacement of the brachial plexus, which is the case. Now, this injection and displacement allows us an opportunity to approach the plexus a little closer with the needle, which we can see right there. Okay, you can see how the local anesthetic injection basically separates the brachial plexus elements. Good. At this point in time, we're going to insert the catheter. Okay, so that's the catheter tip now exiting the needle. And as the catheter exits the needle, it tends to push the brachial plexus. We want to avoid the catheter going through the anterior scaling muscle, so we start withdrawing the needle slowly while advancing the catheter. If we now decrease the depth a bit more, we will see the needle track, we will see the catheter, 
And let's bring the brachial plexus a little bit more into the picture. And that's the brachial plexus. So that's the catheter. That's the brachial plexus. Middle scaling muscle. Anterior scaling muscle. And the brachial plexus sheath in between. Adjusting the focus point here, a little lower, can be useful in outlining the anatomy as well. Okay. Quite nicely seeing the image of the catheter. This is the elements of the brachial plexus. Okay. Now the next step in performing a catheter technique is now to test the catheter position. Aspiration through the catheter and an injection as we can see results in a nice displacement of the brachial plexus and the local anesthetic spread inside the interscaling space. Okay. So that was the procedure. The next comes securing the, securing the catheter. So now we're preparing the area with ether. Next comes the application of the dermabone, which we use not to glue the catheter, but actually to prevent the leakage around the catheter insertion site. The catheter is typically smaller uh, than the needle, and therefore the injection of the local anesthetic tends to leak outside the interscaling space by tracking alongside the catheter application of a little bit of the dermal bond or skin glue prevents that. Now the next, what we do is apply a large tergoderm that fixes the catheter in the desired position and preferably away from the site of surgery. The final step consists of attaching the catheter port for injection and securing it on the anterior chest wall, again, away from the site of surgery. Mm -hmm.